Section 2.9 is about wireless LAN GUI configuration for client connectivity. The objective of this section is to interpret and verify wireless LAN configuration in a wireless controller GUI like Cisco Wireless LAN Controller, focusing on wireless LAN creation, security settings, quality of service profiles, advanced settings, client connectivity behavior. Let's get started with wireless LAN creation. Wireless LAN is the process of defining a wireless network that wireless clients can connect to. The key elements you'll see in the GUI are SSID or the broadcast name of the wireless network, VLAN ID which maps wireless LAN traffic to a wired VLAN, and interface using Wi-Fi protocols and frequencies like 2.4 or 5 GHz. Next are the security settings. The purpose of this is to determine how clients authenticate and encrypt communication with the access point. The following are the common security options in GUI for client authentication. Open authentication allows unrestricted access to a wireless network. It basically means no authentication is required. This is usually found in public Wi-Fi networks. Open authentication is not secure because any client can connect. It is generally not recommended for secure networks due to its lack of protection. Next is WEP or Wireless Equivalent Privacy. It uses a static key and is easily compromised, making it unsuitable for modern networks. WEP is an older, outdated security protocol with known vulnerabilities and is generally considered obsolete. The next method is WPA2 or Wi-Fi Protected Access 2. It was introduced as an improvement over WEP and it utilizes stronger encryption algorithms like AES and is most commonly used protocol today. The WPA2 protocol offers two types of authentication, personal and enterprise mode. The personal mode is also known as pre-shared key or PSK, and it uses a single password for all users, making it suitable for home or small office networks. WPA2 Enterprise is designed for larger organizations. It requires each user to authenticate with unique credentials and is often managed by a RADIUS server. And the latest method is the WPA3. This is the latest standard that offers several enhancements, including stronger encryption, improved protection against brute force attacks, and simplified secure onboarding for IoT devices. And here is a client authentication method summary. While WEP is obsolete, WPA2 is widely used, and WPA3 is the most secure option for modern wireless networks, especially when considering the increasing number of IoT devices and the need for robust security. There are also other GUI settings to review like authentication types and encryption. Let's start with authentication types. The three common authentication types for wireless networks are PSK, 802.1x, and Open. PSK or pre-shared key is the simplest form of authentication and commonly used in home and small office networks. It uses a single password or the PSK and is shared among all users connecting to the network. While easy to set up, it offers less security compared to the other methods, as a compromised PSK can affect the entire network. Next is 802.1x. This is a port-based authentication protocol that provides stronger security by verifying each user's identity before granting network access. It often involves a RADIUS server, and can use various authentication methods like usernames and passwords, certificates, or token cards. And another authentication type is open. Open authentication provides no security. 
any device can connect to the network without needing to authenticate. This is typically found in public hotspots where users might be redirected to a captive portal for web-based authentication. Then, there are also different encryption settings. The three encryption TKIP, AES CCMP, and GCMP are used in Wi-Fi networks to secure data transmission. TKIP or Temporal Key Integrity Protocol was an older encryption protocol introduced as a security upgrade to WEP. This is now considered insecure by modern standards and has known weaknesses. Next encryption type is AES with CCMP. AES with CCMP or Advanced Encryption Standard with Counter Mode with Cipher Block Chaining Message Authentication Code is the encryption tool used in WPA2. It provides robust security by using AES for encryption and CCMP for ensuring data integrity and authenticity. And the last encryption type is GCMP. GCMP is an enhancement over AES CCMP and is part of the WPA3 standard and is more efficient and provides faster encryption and authentication. The next wireless configuration setting is the quality of service profiles. The purpose of QoS is to prioritize certain types of traffic over wireless. Here are examples of prioritized traffic. Voice over IP calls and video conferencing are highly sensitive to latency and jitter, so they are typically prioritized to ensure clear communication. Next is online gaming. Low latency is critical for online gaming, so gaming traffic is often prioritized to provide a responsive and enjoyable gaming experience. Applications used in business, such as financial transactions or remote access to servers, may be prioritized to ensure reliable and secure operation. Tasks like software updates or large file downloads are often classified as lower priority and may be queued or delayed if necessary. So, let's get started with QoS profiles. These profiles are commonly used in networking, especially in Cisco's wireless LAN controller solutions to classify and prioritize different types of network traffic. Platinum Profile is designed for high-priority, real-time applications like voice over IP traffic. It ensures the best possible quality of service with minimal latency and jitter. Gold Profile is dedicated to high-quality video applications, providing sufficient bandwidth and priority for smooth video streaming and conferencing. Silver is the default QoS setting for most clients and supports normal bandwidth for general data traffic. And the Bronze profile for non-real-time or guest services, providing the lowest bandwidth and priority. It is used for traffic that can tolerate delays and is not critical to real-time operations. Let's move on to another wireless GUI configuration, which is Advanced Settings. Let's start with Client Load Balancing. It is a feature that distributes wireless clients evenly among multiple access points in a network. Next is Band Steering. It guides dual band devices to connect to the optimal frequency band. Band Steering analyzes device capabilities and directs them to the 5 GHz band if supported and beneficial, or allows connection to the 2.4 GHz band otherwise. Then we have Client Exclusion. It is a security feature that temporarily blocks clients after excessive authentication failures. It can be enabled globally or per wireless LAN and relies on correctly configured EAP timeouts and potential radius server settings. Next advanced setting is Broadcast SSID. This setting enables or disables SSID visibility. 
This is an example of hiding SSID from the network on the Cisco Wireless LAN controller. Broadcast SSID enabled is unchecked. Next advanced setting is Fast Roaming or 802.11R. This setting allows devices to quickly transition between access points. This is important for applications sensitive to latency, such as voice over IP and video conferencing. This reduces roaming delays for continuous connections. And the last setting is DITM period or delivery traffic indication message. This setting affects power saving. The DTIM interval determines how often clients in power save mode wake up to check for data. A higher DTIM interval allows devices to stay in power save mode longer, saving battery, but may delay receiving multicast traffic. And a lower DTIM interval requires more frequent wake-ups, potentially draining battery faster, but reduces delays for multicast traffic. Setting a DTIM interval of 1 or 2 is often recommended for devices requiring constant connectivity. And the final wireless GUI configuration for this section is wireless connectivity status. The purpose of this is to check how clients are connecting and what issues may be occurring. Here are the key client information you can find in the GUI. Status is how long the client has been connected to the wireless network. SSID is the last SSID the device is connected to. Access point is the access point the client was last seen associated with. Signal is the signal-to-noise ratio of the client's wireless connection. If it's low, it means poor signal and consider moving the client or access point. Channel is what channel the client is associated on. Usage is the total of how much upload and download traffic the client has passed on the network. IPv4 and IPv6 are the assigned IP address of the client device. MAC address is the MAC address of the client device and the packets sent from the device. Remember that the client status page is great for basic troubleshooting. Setting to steer dual band clients to the less congested 5 GHz band. QoS profile you should apply for voice over IP devices. A simpler security method using a shared password often used for guest or small networks. Purpose of enabling 802.11 are Security mode that uses a radius server for client login. Wireless advanced setting that spread clients across multiple access points. Security setting that has no password and used in guest networks. Advanced setting that affects the power saving mode of clients.